What's good? It's Fever. With the NDA dropping and spell break, it's time to dive in and share some of the specifics on the game. Today we'll be taking a look at just what kind of spells you'll be slinging, what they do, and how they combo together. The elements you'll be casting spells from in spell break are fire, frost, stone, toxic, wind, and lightning. Some quick information, in a match you will find different elemental gauntlets. You can equip one to your left and one to your right hand, and they allow you to cast a primary, almost spammable attack, which will cost mana, and a second attack called a sorcery that doesn't cost mana, but is restricted by a long cooldown and is much more impressive looking. Let's start with fire. Now the primary attack you have here is a standard fireball, a projectile that flies in a straight line and explodes in a small AoE on impact. These feel much more like rockets from FPS games where sometimes you aren't even going to look and try and score a direct hit, you're just trying to clip people in the AoE that you get by attacking the ground. The sorcery here is a wall of fire. This allows you a measure of zone control and should be a bit straightforward with how it works. Next up is frost. The primary attack here is a chargeable ice lance. When you click and hold down the attack, you'll have a slight zoom in effect and gain increased damage and velocity tied to the length of the charge. There is some slight drop to the projectile on firing it, especially over long distance. The frost sorcery is blizzard. This is a short range, self-centered AoE that freezes enemies in place, allowing you to make an escape or line up a shot safely. A note about frost attacks is that they leave these ice slicks on the ground, and these reduce traction while increasing movement speed while you're on them. They'll also defrost into water after some time. Now for my favorite element, stone. The primary attack for stone has you punch the ground, shooting forward a shockwave that deals high damage, but only against enemies that are touching the ground. This will not hit somebody if they're in the air or on a different level. Stone Sorcery is the ability to hurl a giant boulder. This shoots out in an arc and can travel huge distances. The longer it stays in the air, the bigger it gets, and it looks like it's going to deal more damage, but it doesn't seem to be that way yet. Toxic is next. The primary attack here fires a loose spread of multiple arcing projectiles that, if they miss, will leave a puddle of poison on the ground, dealing damage to anybody who touches them. The toxic sorcery is lobbing out a massive poison cloud. It's thrown in a very slight arc and deals damage to players for standing in it and not just on impact. Now for the flashiest element, wind. The primary attack here works kind of like a minigun. Upon activation, there's a bit of a wind-up before it starts to fire, but holding the button down after that will just fire these attacks one after another without needing to restart the wind-up. This attack, if fired facing the ground, will blast you into the air quickly and gives you some killer mobility and helps create some very cool kill clips. Wind Sorcery is being able to summon a stationary tornado, dealing damage to those inside of it and pulling players towards the center. And lastly, lightning. The primary attack here will fire three bolts of lightning very quickly in succession, straight ahead, and is the closest thing to hit scan that this game has. It's reliable, but very underwhelming damage. This element sorcery is a lightning storm, which on top of damaging those inside of it, has the ability to stun. This is also a running theme of lightning damage types, especially when you see these kind of lightning tendrils as opposed to lightning strikes. So those are the basic moves, where stuff starts to get rather cool though, is the interactions between different spells and elements. The first style of combination are more ability specific, namely the stones boulder toss and the winds tornado sorcery. Essentially, you can alter the element of these attacks. If you hurl a boulder and hit it with a fireball, then it becomes a meteor and on impact will leave fire behind. Hit it with an ice lance and it becomes a falling iceberg and leaves frost on the ground. Same thing essentially when you hit a tornado with either fire, toxic, or lightning, it just soaks up that element. And aside from changing the type of damage and the appearance, it can also play around with different class skills or items, as well as feeding into the normal type of spell combinations, which are just essentially elemental reactions. And it's probably easier to go element by element to explain these. So let's start with Frost. 
We're already aware that it leaves these ice slicks on the ground. Well, stone skills and wind skills will clear up those slicks, or puddles if you've let them defrost. Fire abilities will also remove them, but in doing so, it will create steam. This is something that will linger in the air a little bit and does very light damage while it's there. Toxic burns through and replaces frost on the ground, and lightning will electrify frost and water. Although electrification doesn't seem to do any damage, but it can stun people who stumble over top of it. Now, here is a little bit more to this. Steam, which is created when fire and ice meet, cancel each other out and steam is the byproduct. You're gonna be seeing a clip on screen now of me being in a bit of a firefight against somebody and we just keep firing and nullifying each other's projectiles. This is a unique interaction between this pair of elements that doesn't really happen in any of the other elements. Steam is also incredibly reactive to lightning causing a huge AOE if it's electrified. Now, moving on to Toxic, Toxic also creates puddles on the ground. Just like Frost, both stone and wind will clear it up. Wind leads to small explosions when doing so, and will also clear up the Toxic Sorcery with, I think, three hits. Fire applied to Toxic causes an explosion and a very short, incredibly powerful fire to both the Puddles and the Sorcery. Lightning can and will electrify Toxic. Frost, though, is where this stuff gets interesting, because Frost crystallizes Toxic. So if it's used on a puddle on the ground, it will still have the same slippery properties of an ice slick, but it's still Toxic and will explode if it's hit with fire. When it comes to the sorcery, you solidify the entire cloud, creating a very dangerous, solid object, a very wall-like object, except because it's frost and toxic, it reacts to lightning. Because it's frozen toxic, it will explode and burn with fire. And additionally, a stone shockwave will shatter it. So its usefulness is a little bit downplayed, defensively at least, but man, is it cool to do. Both fire and stone have largely been spoken about at this point. They do share their own unique interaction though. If fire is on the ground, Stone's shockwave will spread it and create their own kind of mini walls of fire. A small quirk with fire and toxic is if toxic is applied on top of a burning fire, it will still become a toxic fire, but there will be no explosion. Wind and lightning also have mainly been spoken for. The only thing to add with wind is that while it generally will clear out most elements on the ground, it will actually carry lightning and charge up if it passes through some. This also happens with Toxic shot through lightning. It's easiest to see this when it's shot through lightning storm, but it also works on anything that's been electrified. As far as I'm aware, that's all of the interactions. I promise this word salad explanation is way more intuitive in game. What gets chaotic is running in squads and having tons of elements at your disposal as a group. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but most of these AOE effects taking place on the ground will not only hurt the enemy, but they'll deal damage to anybody, including you. The interplay between a lot of this stuff is really, really satisfying to play with, especially once you get the hang of it and it's not just chaos, but also makes me wonder how difficult it will be to add new elements with similar levels of interconnectivity, but that's just for another time. That will do it for me, guys. Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.